Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 155 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, where I think I've got this working. So I'm going to turn this on for a minute, and we're going to see, watch what happens in a moment, when this thing does its thing. You ready? Thought I had this working. Maybe I lied. Thought I had this working. Do your thing. Do your thing. Why didn't you do your thing? Are you out of nether stars in here? That could be the case. Haha! -ha. There we go. That's what happened. That one was out of nether stars. Alright, cool. So, what should happen now? Last episode, we set up infinite mana. And it should be working now. I think I got it working. I had to add an extra router and buffer chest because of some weird interaction with modular routers and RF tools crafters that I'll explain in a minute. But I just want to make sure that this is in fact working. So if we pay attention to the redstone, we're in pretty good shape. And what I might do is I have a muffler at this location, right? I'm going to add... Um... It's this, right? No. Nope. What do you think is... Mana pool craft? Batania? That is not the sound. I'm going to mute it anyway. Let's <laughs> see if that makes the, the redstone-y sound go away. We'll see. Uh, so anyway, when the nether star comes out of this chest, okay, the way I've got this set up is this router that we were playing with last episode, we set it to terminate on no match, which means that if this sender module, which sends to the chest, fails, it will not process any of the future modules, okay? So basically, Every time it runs, it's like, I'm going to try to send another star into this chest, which can only have one nether star because we set it to one regulator augment, right? Uh, so if this fails, it will not pull more nether stars in, and it will not, therefore, send another star over to the crafter to make more. Okay. okay? Uh, now, it's pulling from this chest, which I'll explain in a minute. But watch what happens when I remove the nether star. When I remove this nether star, what should happen is it'll take the nether star in the buffer. It'll send it to the chest to make this one nether star again. Then, because this was successful, it'll pull the two nether stars, because we have a stack augment, out of the chest and send one of them, okay, into this guy. Cool? That should work. Let's watch what happens. You ready? Ta-da! See what happened there? It was very quick, but what happened was um, it sent another star in here. Now we have another router that is pulling um, two nether stars from here and sending them into here and keeping two in at all times. So his sender is two, his polar module, and I might reverse these as well. I think that would be smart. And I'm gonna configure you no, actually, I want that to stay that way. Never mind. Yeah, puller and then sender, and you're good, right? Um, now, there's some weird mechanic with this, and I don't know if it's because... I don't know what's causing it. I really don't. I really, really don't. Um, <clears throat> but basically, I had to add this extra buffer. In theory, I would expect that I only needed to set this up, pulling and sending from the crafter here directly, and that's it, right? That's it. That's what I would expect. But that's not what's happening for some reason that I haven't figured out yet. Uh, but adding this extra buffer of the chest here is working. What I suspect might be happening is it's seeing this slot as a valid inventory. And it's trying to pull these two nether stars, even though they're like a fake, quote unquote, fake crafting slot. And it's getting confused. Okay? It's getting confused. Um, but the gist is, is that when this guy does what we want him to do, it's working. That's that's the gist of what it's working. 
That's all I can tell you right now, right? So in a moment, when this number hits zero, when the nether star that's sitting there runs out, what's going to happen is it's going to drop the nether star on the thing. This chest will be empty. It will successfully send, which means he's going to pull these two, which means that he's going to send another one over to here. And then this guy will pull the two from here. And we saw it just happen. Boom. Cool. Cool. It did it. It did the thing. It did it. Ta-da. And everybody's happy. And it's and it seems stable to me. I can't 100% explain why it's being a little bit fuzzy. It's being a little bit weird. It's being a little bit weird. But the key here is that it's working, number one. And number two, that we are now having a net gain on mana. So literally infinite mana. <laughs> oh. And that is using modular routers, reliquary, RF tools, refined storage, Batania, the add-on Batania mod mythical botany. I mean, there's there's just a lot of things that we're combining here to make this ridiculousness. Like clearly, you're not meant to have unlimited infinite mana in Batania. And I, you know, am combining several mods with several OP mechanics, right? The ability to duplicate redstone and then turn redstone into nether stars and then turn nether stars into mana. None of that <laughs> is what's meant to happen. But nonetheless, it is happening. So long story short, this works. I'm, uh, there's, a, there's, there's a couple nuances to it. Like why, I, I'm not 100% sure why it's being a little bit fuzzy, but it's fine. And it's working, right? So like there's never extra nether stars here. And the, and the reason I did some of the trickery here is I didn't want many stacks of nether stars, right? I didn't want there to be a stack of nether stars sitting in this buffer. Um, this would be easier if I didn't care about that, but I do care about that. So I'm going out of my way to limit the number of excess nether stars that we have. Make sense? Like, you know, we would have a, a buffer of 64 nether stars sitting here and maybe several stars, you know, like we don't want that, right? So what's happening is when this one gets removed, this one is moving in there. And because that module is successful, he pulls two, right, with this puller, and then sends one of those two over to here to turn into another two. This guy is able to send into here because he's empty and then he pulls the two that get crafted from here and then this one sits here waiting for this one to move again cool it's a little convoluted and i've explained it now three times so i'm hoping that you guys are getting it feel free to let me know in the comments if if, if you're struggling to because it's a little bit tricky but the the concept is that he won't pull out of this chest and he won't make more nether stars until he successfully sends another star to this chest. Right here, sorry, wrong chest. Right? Until he successfully sends another star to this chest. When he does, he will do all his things, right? So one more time, boom, boom, all the things, right? So now we've got two sitting there, we've got one sitting there, none and two, and that's that's how we do. That's how we automate. That's the fun times. And I muted the right thing apparently, so that's exciting. Right? And remember, we have to make four stacks of redstone, right? So keep that in mind. Um, but legitimately, right? Legitimately unlimited mana at this point, which is kind of cool, which is kind of cool. I like it. I like it. I'm very proud of this build, in case you can't tell. Anyway, let's do some more stuff. So last episode, I was going to make the Phoenix down, right? Uh, and for that, we're going to need a few of these things, right? But I should be able to get this now. We just need to get some more buckets of milk. Yeah, I was going to do this last episode, and then I got distracted with the potential for infinite mana. I got distracted. It's a thing that happens. But now we've got a cool phoenix down. And I'm hoping that this just needs to be anywhere in my inventory. Because if it has to be in your offhand, that would be kind of a bummer. So, I don't know I don't, I don't know if I want to test it right now. I don't see why I couldn't, I guess. Um, let's go Let's go die and see, see what occurs when and if we die. Uh, where can I go to die? Probably the nether? Seems like a good place, right? Got to be some bad guys in there. Just want to see, we're experimenting right now to see what happens, right? So two things I'm going to remove. One, I'm going to remove my meat feeder, and I'm going to remove all my armor. 
and we'll just take a bunch of damage here. Are you meat feeding still? You are meat feeding, even though you're not bobbled up. So, how about we just put all this stuff away? I need to find more bad guys. Something that will hurt more, like this dude. Hey, buddy. Yeah. So let's see, the test here is... If I'm about to die, which is like, you know, imminent. Ta-da! It worked! Cool! And I got regen resistance and jump boost. All right, well that's nifty. I like that. So in the event that we're about to die, we have one extra life. That's kind of cool. Uh, and it doesn't need to be in your offhand. That's the one thing that always, like, sort of annoyed me about the totem of him dying. Like, it needs to be in your offhand all the time. Like, I don't want to see things in my offhand all the time. That's screen real estate being taken up. That's <laughs> why I don't like using shields. Like, you know, I don't know. Um, maybe I'm weird. Maybe I'm just a little bit weird. Um, there's no maybe about it, is there? No, I'm absolutely just a little bit weird. But, um, like, that's screen real estate that I really don't want taken up, if you know what I mean. And, uh, yeah, that's all there is to it. I just don't want to, I don't want to be, I don't want to be using up that screen real estate. So now we'll make another one of these. That was just a test run, but now we've got that thing. That's cool, right? Uh, I can probably re-equip my magnet. Um, but we want to maybe, let's see, what's the range on that Solingolia thing? Eh, not great. So if I moved this a little bit. I'm going to de-equip my magnet for a moment. Is that enough? That seems like enough. Yeah, I don't think I'm magneting up the nether star. And now, when the redstone's running, which we can test by removing this, we won't be magneting up the redstone, and my magnet's still equipped. So that's cool. I mean, worst case, I could have made another one of those, but... It's all good. Yeah, I'm really quite liking <laughs> this thing. I it's I can you tell I'm proud of it? Every now and then I, I do like a really ridiculous build that I'm quite proud of. And this is up there, right? This is up there. Infinite mana. Literally infinite. Oh look, we're about to we're about to send another nether star there, which is fine. Boop. And then all the redstones start exploding. <laughs> it's so cool. Uh, and as a result, we also have infinite resources now because because this thing is a thing, right? Remember, this guy's gonna create more more mana, and and it'll be fine, and that should be cool. So I think yeah, we'll be in good shape all around. That's awesome, right? All right. Anyway, where was I? Making things and stuff. Yes, 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 yes. Um, the only slowdown is if this runs out of mana, it slows the process down because it gets to a point where this guy isn't able to feed the mana fast enough. Um, if you wanted this to be like the best it could be, maybe throw a couple more Wither Aconites on there or get one of those um, soil dudes. There's the there's the seed, is it called, from Batania? The overgrowth seed, yeah. Uh, that can only be found in dungeon chests though. I would love to find one, but also, like, spending a whole bunch of time looking for dungeons is also not, like, amazing sounding to me, so I might not. But that would be a way to make this run a little bit better. It's it's fine. It works. There, it just slows down while it's waiting for uh, mana to replenish, right? So it's a little bit slower, you know, if it, if it has to create two in a row, basically. So anyway, I said I was going to check out compact machines real quick. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing that. I don't know what I'm going to do with the compact machine. <laughs> I haven't quite figured that out yet. But just for fun, I want to experiment a little bit just to see where the mod is at and how it's working in 1.16, right? So let's spend a few minutes making some compact machine walls, right? So I'm going to want probably a handful of those. Um, a stack seems like a good start, and then we'll go from there. Now what's interesting is that really all they're used for, as far as I can tell, is creating these dudes, right? Now I still don't see how item tunnels are made, which is kind of a question. Now there's the there's the personal shrinking device that I can use. Um, 
Yes, you can use tunnels. Oh, yeah. you can use it by right clicking on personal training device. Please use GA to look up crafting recipes. Okay, cool. Yeah, my concern though is that I did that and I don't know how to make item tunnels. All right, so checking the uh, Curse Forge page for this. Um, it looks like miniaturization crafting has been separated into its own mod. So if you want to use that, there's a separate mod for it. Uh, also, not yet implemented in 116. Tunnels are half implemented. The functionality is partially there for item tunnels, but as a result of them not being fully implemented yet, there's no crafting recipes. So that's why tunnels don't have a recipe. So that makes sense. You can also currently not nest machines, and the shrinking device will warn about this. So no nesting of machines. So no compact machines within compact machines within compact machines, if that makes sense. Uh, I'm guessing that's a thing that will happen eventually. Uh, because it just says not not yet implemented in 116. It's a full rewrite of most of the mechanics and internal code. So let's just check it out. I mean, we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. It's nice that it exists. I, I might find something to build in there, but we're not going to go crazy on compact machines because, you know, unless, unless we were refactoring our whole base. You know what's nice? The Endermen that were messing with me last episode have disappeared. I haven't seen Endermen in a little bit. So I don't know what happened to them, but... You know, there was just like a bunch of Endermen around my base last episode. I don't know if you guys have any idea what or how that happened. Um, I mean, my first thought was maybe it's my dark room here, but I don't think we get Endermen in here all that much. And they die so quickly. Now, we do get Endermen probably occasionally, but they die almost immediately. Like, they spawn, and then within seconds, they're dead. So I don't think that's what was causing my Enderman situation. Um, but yeah, let's check out Compact Machines now. Sound cool? So I'm going to do... I'm going to make just two of them. I'm going to make a tiny one, just just for fun, and then I'm going to make a maximum sized one. We need a block of emeralds for that, which is no problem. We've got all the things, right? So we'll get the smallest version of the compact machine and the largest. And again, full rewrite of the mod. Uh, the mod developer is working on bringing back all the functionality that we've been used to. Uh, so, so you know, there's, there's things that aren't implemented yet, but I just want to take a peek at it, right? So we should just right click to shrink into this dude. Oh, hello. Sweet. Looks like it's working to me. And then we just right click this guy to get out. Awesome. Now you can advance charge porter your way out, if I recall correctly. Um, that's neat. That's neat. All right. And then if we were to shrink into this machine, this is your max size compact machine. This can do a lot of things. Obviously, more, more real estate, more space. And you can see your coordinates. You're in, you're in a dimension called the void. I think if we forge TPS here, we can see, oh wow, look at all the different dimensions that exist. The mining dimension, the just another void dimension dimension, applied energistic spatial storage, uh, some of my random dimensions that I created, the, the uranium tendrils, right? Some of my RF tools, Ratlantis, the nether. This is the compact machines, compact world dimension. That would be this one. Right, so basically the way this works is you're in you're in a different dimension and there's areas of block set up, right? So here we're at 1032, negative 1014. And here we're at eight, negative 10, 16, 14 ish, right? So it looks like it's basically every every cube generates like a thousand blocks away from each other. That's kind of neat. I don't know if I ever knew to that. I'm trying to think of like what kind of cool thing I could build in a compact machine, but without without the uh, without these guys, without item tunnels, I, I thought they would. I thought they were implemented. So without them in there, I feel like uh, I don't think there's anything I can do without without them being implemented. Nothing particularly cool because generally I like to you know use them to do processing, right? What would what I would do in a in another you know series might be to like put all this into a compact machine right and have like all my item processing for resources and whatnot we'll see all right so i'm going to change gears here there's a little project i've been meaning to work on um so compact machines did not go exactly as i thought they would go uh so as a result we're going to shift gears because we checked it out we realized it's not as far along as i thought obviously still being worked on Right, not not complaining that it's not done, and no, no one should. Right, remember, all modders are just doing this 
pretty much for free with their free time. Uh, but I was I thought there would be uh, something different we could do. So what I want to do is move on to the next project that I had in mind, which is I want to see if it's possible in 116 with things like Astral and a few other toys that we have available to us to automate killing the Ender Dragon. We've done this once before. Um, and basically the way it works is we use Astral's Physolytic Prime to capture the Ender Dragon in a specific location and prevent him from moving so that we can automate killing him, right? Um, so this is an extension of the Ever-Shifting Fountain. Is that right? I think. Um, yeah, I think so. It's going to need a lot of mana. Or no, not a lot of mana. A lot of liquid starlight. Um, so I'd like to try this out. The Physolytic Prime. Yeah. What we can do is we can use this. So I'm going to test this real quick here in the overworld with certain mobs. And we'll see how that goes. So let's talk high level about how this works. So the Physolytic Prime or the Neuromantic Prime are two things that we can use to augment the capabilities of the Ever-Shifting Fountain. Liquid Starlight may store Starlight energy in a condensed and manageable form, but it's easy to unleash that same power again. Uh, so basically, we build this Ever-Shifting Fountain to use the power in Liquid Starlight. And we have to make a multi-block like so, okay? Uh, but it first must be primed for this power to have any effect, right? So there's the Neuromantic Prime and the Physolytic Prime. You add this block to the multi-block to determine what it does. Uh, and this one is really cool. It sucks up nearby mobs and freezes them in place as long as there's enough mana or liquid starlight in the reservoir. Uh, so we're going to give this a try and see if we can't use it to automate the Ender Dragon. So there's going to be a multi-step process here. First step, we're going to test it out, see how well it works still, because, you know, I don't know if it changed in 116. Then we're going to build it over in the end, pretty much planning to build it where the Ender Dragon spawns when you spawn a new Ender Dragon. Then we will set up automatically killing the Ender Dragon if we can. And then finally, we're going to set up automatically spawning the Ender Dragon. And then we should have a push button kill Ender Dragon kind of mechanic. Hopefully, we shall see. I don't know if the uh, astral, um, like this thingy, can hurt Ender Dragons, but we're gonna find out. We'll see. We'll see. But step one, uh, liquid starlighting and whatnot. Uh, so how are we on, like, I haven't really even looked at aquamarines. I mean, we've got a number of them, but not like a stupid number of them. Um, 10 mil buckets of liquid starlight with lava can make aquamarine shale at 2% chance. 98% chance to get sand. Right, so this is basically... Yes. Interesting. It's your, it's your cobble jenny type mechanic, right? Maybe. Maybe. Where else can we get aquamarine shale from? Not really much else. Not really much else. Yeah, I'm not seeing a lot of things here, huh? Not really much else for aquamarines. So I think if we want this, I'm just, I wanna test this real quick, right? Um, and this is gonna be a super quick basic test. Well, maybe that's not a good place to do this. So we're going to want that and a bucket of lots light oil, not lava. Looks like lava, but not lava. I think we're looking at this. And I'll make this a little bit less derpy in a bit. So it's a 2% chance to get this, right? Um, it's 
basically a sand gen. Ooh, what are raiders? Okay. So if we had a destruction dude, right? Destructor. And some cables. Right? So if we check real quick, there are no aquamarines available to us. We should go check on our village. Go do that while that runs, and then in theory, we should come back and find ourselves with at least some aquamarine if that works. Dire colony. What direction were they coming from? The northeast. That would be this way. Oh, hello, friends. Not today. I completed the sniper duel challenge. Wow, why am I taking damage? What's up with that? Why am I getting hurt? Yeah, I actually died. Explain to me why I'm taking damage. I'm wearing my mecha suit. Am I not getting armor from my mecha suit? Is it like out of power or something? That's weird. I'll be back. You won't be back. Yeah, why am I taking damage? That doesn't make any sense to me. It's weird. Strange. Strangeness, for sure. Now now I lost my angelic feather. Boo. Yeah, you notice I don't have any... Did I ever have armor things? Like, I have to go back and look at previous videos now. Anyway, are we getting aquamarine from this? I'm assuming that's what we're talking about here, right? Liquid interaction? Containment chalice. That's this thing, right? I guess we'll give it a few minutes and see if we happen to get any aquamarine from that. Failing that, we'll figure something else out. We have three aquamarines. They showed up. So that tells me this is generating aquamarines. It's rare. It's only a 2% chance. But just sitting here for a few minutes, aquamarines appeared in our, in our, envir in our thing. So that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Floating orchids. You guys won't, you know... I don't think they'll make aquamarine shale, unfortunately. Unfortunately, I don't think that they interact with sand. There's the orchid ingum, which is the nether equivalent, but that's going to do something like that, right? Um, so, yeah. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and throw this into the item user because I've neglected my, you know, starlight processing thing, which I assume this should actually work. Shouldn't you be working, item user? Buddy? Okay, then. <laughs> so that's a thing. I mean, we have a lot of starlight, so we'll see. But uh, I don't know why that wasn't working. But I guess we'll keep an eye on it. So... Let's look at the Fissadelic Prime thing. Uh, so two things we're going to need to make. We're going to need the Fissadelic Prime itself. And we're going to need the Ever-Shifting Fountain. Right? Uh, and then we're going to need some multi-block stuff. So let me get this crafted and we'll be right back. All right, Ever-Shifting Fountain, I think we're cool. Uh, let's see. So that's going to be three and three for infused wood planks. Okay. And then three sooty marble across the top. We're going to want a rock crystal dude here with two of these underneath it. 
and then star metal gold star metal and that is doing a thing cool now where is my collector crystal didn't i have a collector crystal over here you know what i think i yeah i'm i i redirect it i redirected it where is my Where's my, where's my linking doohickey? Where indeed is my linking doohickey? YouTuber blindness strikes again. As a matter of fact, no, seriously, where is it? Because I'm not seeing it at all in here. There it is. Found it. For a minute I was like, is it like legitimately gone? I'm gonna unlink all links so that I can link you just to him. And then sleep to the day. All right, so we should be ready to whoosh this guy up now. So that's complete. Now this guy will be another one of these. All the actual stuff. Yeah, I'm interested to see. Like, this may or may not be doable again, but I guess time will tell. Oh, right, and I need to do that. Good. I forgot this was going to be... I had it on my hotbar ready to go. I was ready for this. I really was. There we go. That should be it. Nice and simple. Astral's the best, isn't it? Hooray! Alright, so ever-shifting fountain complete. Now we want the Fissadilic Prime, dude. So that's going to be three of you. And then four gold and a resonating gem. Boop, 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 boop. With the resonating gem. And then one, two, three mirrored. So. And then we're going to want a lens. No. Uh, do we have any of those dudes? All right, so let's just get a glass. Because we can very easily do this. And that I think went here. Yes. And that should be good to go. Do you need a constellation? He may need a constellation. He needs this one. Whatever that one is. Uh Remind me how I do that again. Do I need a do I need a crystal attuned to that? I think I need a crystal attuned to that one. And I'm sure I don't have one. Uh, we've got Lucerna, but this is Vicio. Is that what it is? I have to attune a Vicio constellation. So let's go do that real quick. Hopefully Vicio is in the sky right now. If not, we'll uh, figure it out. I'm just gonna grab whatever tool durability. Sure, why not? And then we're gonna want to get our Vicio. Constellation paper. I'm always afraid that I'm going to break the city marble under it. Because half the time I do. Cool, cool, cool. Vicky, oh please. That looks right, but I'm assuming Vicky is just not in the sky right now, sadly. Though, isn't that it? Yeah, it's right there. Right there. I think I had a problem where I had to break and replace this guy for him to behave himself a little bit. Do thing. Uh, maybe we have to pass another night. God, that's right there, so it should be good. Unless I'm missing, I don't think I'm missing one though. One, two, three, four, five, six points, and they're all perfectly placed, right? I didn't like offset one or something. No, it looks right. 
Yeah, it should be behaving. Let me sleep. Let me pass two nights and we'll be right back. We'll see if that's it. There we go. Oh, maybe not. Are we going or what? Come on, chief. It looked like for a second it was there. Looked like for a second it was there. I thought about it. I might re-log just because... Oh, that, what, what, there we go. Now we're cool. Do it. Make the thing. Make it now. Before it breaks again. Uh, yeah, hey, look. Vicio's going. Nice. That'll be a good time. All right, you can go back in the book now, sir. I love I love just watching the crafting stuff in Astral because it's just so gorgeous. How cool does that look? Huge, huge fan of what's being done in this mod. Uh, that's why I keep coming back to it because it's so good. Hey, there we go. Now we're cooking. Sweet. All right, so now for around it, we're going to need two Nocturnals and two Stardust. Perfect exactly what I've got. Do thing. Alright. Nocturnals and Stardust. Look how cool, like, just the drawing of the constellation underneath. Like, it's so good. So that one looks like a Nocturnal. And then I assume you're gonna ask for a Stardust. Yep. And then another Nocturnal. And then another Stardust. Boom. Great, right? Love it. Cool. Alright, so what I'm going to do is wrap up the episode here. We'll come back next time. I will prepare um, some, of the, some of the stuff we're going to need for the multi-block. But we'll be ready to check out the Fissilitic Prime. And hopefully... We can still capture the Ender Dragon, which should be neat, and uh, see how that goes. So we're probably going to test it on some normal mobs, and then we'll test it on the Ender Dragon, just to make sure everything's groovy. All right, guys, for now, Dull20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.